All of the guards are seeking sight Someday we know they talk Plenty they when know they see you They just the use men play So na green are them ever You love me no be play So na green are them ever Now you I come to hell All of the girls are seeking sir Someday we know the talk Plenty day when all they see you They just a waste your foul So not clean or tell You love me no be play So not clean or tell me You know they fall in my heart Hallelujah. Let me tell somebody it's a special day today. And the Lord has called me to do something special in my life. Today is such a cardinal day in the air. I must let you know. Today is such a cardinal day and a very special day. Because when somebody has done so much for you, and you cannot tell it all, you must have a day to say, Na, re, ke, le, mo, ah. If you have a thousand tongues, this tea won't be enough. Say, what shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Somebody say, what shall I For the fact that we have an invited guest, I'm telling you, you could have continued singing today. I'm telling you, it's another day to pay God back in Thanksgiving. Come on, tell somebody, don't fry your face, you oh God, man. Oh, come on, you know, say, you are, say you are indebted to the Most High. <laughs> and you got to praise Him today. Hallelujah. He said, Bless the Lord, who, my soul? <laughs> and then all that is within me, that means my liver. That you agree with me. I mean, my kidney, I mean, my heart, my lungs, everything within me, my pancreas, everything within me, located within my abdominal cavity, located within my chest cavity. The Bible says everything within me, including everything in my mental cranium. The Bible says, let them give him praise. He said, let them not forget his benefit. Am I talking to somebody here? The fact that you are alive today, that is good. I'm telling you, it's killing them out there, but it's preserving you. Give him praise once again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I got news this morning that UK has entered red light again. Am I right? Red zone now. Nah, that means they're going to ban traveling again to UK in, 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 in and out. I might talk to somebody here. But we are here. Whether they say see your house or not, you are not in red zone. You are in Holy Ghost zone. Providing all your needs. <laughs> Blessing you. Protecting you. I mean keeping you. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, I you ever from a Balate world. Hallelujah. This morning, by the grace of God, the Lord said something to me which I just want to quickly share with the church. 
Because there's something happening this morning that will, ladies and gentlemen, change your life forever. And I want you to pay attention because I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the word that is coming, somebody's word is coming today. See, let me tell you this. When your word comes, you know your word has come. I said, when your word comes, you know your word has come. There's a pastor under the sound of my voice that the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell that pastor that your word has come. He said, Pastor, in this ministry, he's not the invited guest. And invited guest also can keep into it. I mean, can key into it. But I'm talking to somebody here. There's a woman under the sound of my voice that her word has come. There's a man under the sound of my voice. I say, Your word has come. See, ladies and gentlemen, a word from God can change your life forever. The vessel that God has brought to us today is come with a word. Come on, tell somebody, it's come with my word. Oh, come on, somebody's not getting what I'm talking about. Remember the Bible says, whoever receives a prophet in the name of the prophet, is going to receive what? A prophet's reward. And whoever does not receive a prophet in the name of, if you see a prophet, say, ah, bro, bro, Femsky. I've seen some that call me, bro, Femsky. <laughs> you understand? Ah, some say, ah, Femo Square Road. That, that was a man who came to our church one day I was preaching. The man was sitting, ah, who do you want to push in looking here? Who do you want to go under? Now, I'm I was kids. Ah, no, if I'm most copy on. He knew me when I was young. So it was, oh, you, oh, you, I never had a food, you are no whoop. I know I'm talking to somebody here. Somebody give you, put it together for Jesus. Oh, no, if I'm pushing, look, I'm kidding here. Money, kidding, Molo. I'm not talking to somebody here. So, ladies and gentlemen, today, he could not receive any word in that service. He, the only, he had to have a, I mean, he had a, a dream one day, and he had to come and meet me. And this man came, I had to pray for him. There's a vision in his life that God was going to relocate him to a white man's land, an America. You know, he came from, you know, a reversed uh, background. Very deprived. So, that was a big vision for his life. And here was this man, now 50 years old. No door had opened. 52, no door had opened. So he came to me. I looked at him. I lay hands on him by the power of the Holy Ghost. And God gave me the word. And the door opened instantly. He's in America now. So, <laughs> so until he came off for most copy. Now, he start, you know, since that time, you know what he calls me now? He said, Pastor Femi, he said, if not for you, will I be where I am today? He said, he's almost run out of destiny, but for God. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. We have a prophet in the house today. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, let's put it together for Jesus. This great man of God has been sent to us by the Lord. He's a, a prophet simply means the mouthpiece of the Most High God. Someone that God has given a word. He has packaged a word inside of him. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care his eloquence. I don't care his brilliance of oratory. I don't care. One thing I want to make sure I locate is the word. Because God told me, he said, I put a word in his mouth for the house. And the second thing God said unto me is that the word that God has given unto him will sharpen your sickle. Oh, come on. I'm talking to somebody here. Open your Bible to Mark chapter number 4. I, I think we quickly need to read this. Mark chapter 4. I need a pastor, please, to read. Uh, pastor, we look at Mark 4, 29. And then another pastor, please, look at Mark chapter uh, uh, number. If you know your voice is not fine, please don't. Anyway, every voice in the house is fine, man. I'm not talking to somebody here. Somebody look at Joel chapter number 3, verse 13. Mark 4, 29, Joel 3, 13. Glory be to God. Yes. Can Oh, yes. And when, <laughs> see, ladies and gentlemen, this is the when. If you are waiting for another time, you're making a mistake. I told you, God, last week, was it last week, right? Last week, we were preaching, I, I, I think two Fridays ago, right? The last night with you, right? Last night, Friday of last month, right? And then on Sunday, right? God gave us the word that we have entered into the season of what? Unending harvest. Now, the Bible says, and when the grain ripens. And I came here on Sunday, and I gave you, I, I had a vision into Sunday. Can you remember? Yes, sir. That I saw cocoa, everything ripe. Can you remember? Yes, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that week was most amazing for me. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, three of my sons, they've been believing God for a breakthrough. This last week, they got a breakthrough of $87 million. Hallelujah. I mean, please understand. Somebody is looking at me and say, Oh, uh, uh, oh that Benque, I want you in the air, Pastor. I want to I want to Pastor. I want to It's not I want to It's for everybody. I keep, see, let me tell you this. Yesterday night, as I was about to run off, 
One of my sons called me. He said, Pastor, he said, you have been telling me since that you see an American job in front of me. He said, he's in church today. He said, you see an American job in front of me. He said, you kept saying it again and again. He said, I, I, you know, God can be humorous. I think God can even tell you the details. He said, and I was giving him some certain details. And he was repeating, he said, and he will be looking. He said, every employment like this, when you see this one, this job from Abuja, this one from Kineko, Lagos. He said, whether he applies or not, he himself knew that it will fail. The application will fail. Because God kept saying, American job, and he believed it with all his heart. That it will be unto him as it has been prophesied. This was just yesterday night. We had the service last week. Not, no American job has, has, has manifested. And he believed that it will be unto him this year, as the Lord has said. You know what? This last week, his boss, he was not involved. His Ogapatapata got a job in another company. And it was a mighty job. An American company came and they gave him a mighty job. Very big job. Like, say, you know, maybe coordinator. I think I was hearing, uh, maybe he's the African coordinator. So he will give the testimony. You know what I'm talking about? Regional, whatever. It, not big job. And when the Oga got it, Oga said, I told the company that I will only migrate on one condition. That there is a staff that works with me. That must go with me. If only you can negotiate with him and bring him, then I will go. Then the American company now had to call him from America and they started negotiating. My son said, I hit them hard. You know the meaning of that? <laughs> I've seen his first fruit before, so I understand why he says he hit them hard. <laughs> As even the one you were collecting before is okay. Now say you now hit them hard with the new one. Ah, or you understand me. He said, I hit them what? Hard. And it's in dollars. You know, when you are negotiating, you know, when you hit somebody hard, you're not talking $10,000. So you understand what I'm talking about. So he said, I hit them hard per month. He said, oh, is that, is, is that because my boss that left, he said, I would have been promoted to his position. So for you to recruit me now to your company. Uh -uh. <laughs> so th those people in America were under pressure. They said in four days, they had to finish the negotiation. An American company said, from America, they said, we have never interviewed somebody under four days like this unemployed. He said, this is the first time. In four days, this last week, my son got the job, full employment, everything now. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, with effect from December 1. <laughs> now, please, please, under, I mean, got the job, I mean, I'm sorry, from January 1, they are starting. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, as they were saying that, another person called me. Ah, the, that one was the most mind-blowing one. In actual fact, I just, he flung me from my prayer seat yesterday night. He flung me on the bed. I mean, flung me on the floor. And I started worshiping. I was like, I didn't even know I was able to sleep with that testimony. I, I, I will wait for the, <laughs> for the testifier to testify himself for that testimony. I said, within these few days of God giving us the word, some people's sickle have been dropping harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, your harvest is there. <laughs> Even the man who just said Shankapo now, that man there, his own sequel also dropped this. Have you got drop? Eh? Oh, drop. <laughs> he got the contract this last week, and it didn't drop heavily. Somebody say Shankapo. <laughs> Every day, somebody, my sequel is dropping now. Say, my harvest is here. Now, does the Bible, yeah, please read it again when the grain is ripe. So, if you are still waiting for your own cocoa to be ripe, mine is ripe. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. He's somebody high five. Tell the person, as the Lord told us last week, as the Lord told us last week my, cocoa my cocoa is ripe. Yes, please read quickly. But when the grain ripens, but when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle. Immediately, does what? He puts in the sickle. Now, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. There are several sickles of life. Giving may be a sickle. Praise may be a sickle. Whatever it is may be a sickle. I don't know what the man of God has come to come and give us. But there was a word God gave me. God said, whatever he will tell you today will sharpen your sickle. Amen. When the grain is ripe, as the cocoa is ripe now, somebody needs to immediately put in what? The sickle. And then when you put in the sickle, what happens? Because the harvest has come. Because the harvest has come. Joel chapter number 3 verse 13 very quickly. Put Joel chapter 3 verse 13, yes. Put it in the sickle. Put it in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Ah, God is still talking to somebody here. I think somebody's going to pass now like that, saying, I'm, I'm going to put in the sickle now. <laughs> Say, because my harvest is ripe. You know what my son said unto me yesterday? 
He said, Pastor, you've been talking about this American job, America. He said, he said, it blew my mind that in four days, everything came to pass, as it was said. In four days. And he said something. He said, I have changed jobs. I don't know how many times. He said, I've changed jobs five times or six times. He said, and every time you give me a word, and exactly with precision, it comes to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a word for you that your cocoa is right. For as many as we, as, as we believe, blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I say, your own cocoa is ripe. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The Bible says, put in the sickle. Because the harvest is what? So there is a gentleman. The problem is not with the ripeness of the grain right now or the harvest. Right now, the issue is, do I have the right seed? Do I even have a sickle? And if I have a sickle, is my sickle sharp? Now, open to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 as, as I'm right now. Ecclesiastes chapter number 10. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter number 10. Glory be to God in the highest. There is somebody sick here that we produce magnanimously. Yeah. There's somebody sick here that we generate generously. Yeah. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verse number 10. Yes, uh, I need the pastor please to read. I don't know. I think I'm flowing with the unknown of pastors this morning. <laughs> Glory be to God. If, yeah. the, if the axe is dull, is if the axe is dull, and one does not sharpen the head, and one does not sharpen the head, then he must use more strength. Then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. God bless you. Now, if the axe is dull and you don't sharpen the edge, wahalani, it's like you are cutting with a cutlass and the, your cutlass is blunt. Do you understand? See, you would always be the last person cutting. In when we're young, they would give us portions to cut in the morning. When you are still cutting with others, you are, you, I mean, those who have sharp cutlass, you are still laughing because all of you are there. But by the time others begin to go and you are left alone, then you realize that your cutlass has been blunt. <laughs> oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, don't wait till the end of this year before you realize there is no harvest. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. You can sharpen your sickle now. That means if I recognize I have a sickle and then it is sharpened, ladies and gentlemen, let, ah, my harvest will be heavy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, I, I want to show you this. Revelation chapter 14, verse 18, please. That's the last scripture I'm giving you this morning. In actual fact, from verse 15, he start talking about um, uh, one that sits on the cloud that has a sickle. Can, 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 a sharp sickle. So he who sat on the cloud yes. thrust in his sickle on the earth. Yes. And the earth was ripped. Okay. Now, before then, read the verses before. From verse 14, yes? Verse 14. Then I looked, mm -hmm. and behold, mm -hmm. a white us. Mm -hmm. I mean, a white cloud. Okay. And on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, mm -hmm. having on his head a golden crown, mm -hmm. and his hand a sharp sickle. And his hand what? A sharp sickle. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are carrying a blunt sickle, the word is coming today. I'm telling you, that one will sharpen your sickle. I said that word will sharpen your sickle. Whatsoever this man or God tells you to do, do it. John chapter 2, the Bible said, and I told you I won't quote any scripture again. <laughs> but I to quote this one. He said, whatsoever I tell you to do what? Now, it doesn't make any sense to say they need wine and you say you should go and gather water. In a community where wine, water has never been converted to wine before. It doesn't make any sense. I, am I talking to somebody here? And then, he now told them to carry the water and go and give the master. He didn't say they should taste it too. He said, just carry the water there and take it to the master. Ah, oh God, you are not taking us to the highest position. Straight. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It takes faith to move that way. What if I get there and the man says, and then you brought water to me. Yeah, I tell you I need water. I told you we need what? Wine. Ladies and gentlemen, it had never been tasted. It was tasted for the first time at the highest point. That's the highest demonstration of faith. He's somebody catch what I'm talking about, but he has told them whatsoever he tells you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you receive today is your word. It will sharpen the sickle in your hand. You will roll it all over the heart and you will have large harvest. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation. While you are clapping as I introduce this man, everybody please stand with a clapping ovation. God bless you, Rego. We have in the house today the pastor of Holy Trinity Lagos, Holy Trinity Church Lagos. He's a man of God that God has used tremendously for me. I must be honest with you, his humility is most amazing. He has operated at the federal and at the local level. He's a man that has, you know, sat over several projects and then even project for the federal government. One day he was telling me one project they were sitting for for the federal government. He was the one in charge of over about 500 billion. I said, what? This man sitting in front of me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's no small man. Let me tell somebody, he's no small man. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you contact this man, now testimony galore, and maybe God would move him to share the testimony of something that just happened in his life recently. I'm going to dedicate a house for him today. <laughs> uh, 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 it's not in the Bible, you agree with me. It has no bearing. What I'm talking about has no bearing. No, no, no. It's not located even in Ajao, you know, Ibeju, Ibere. Bodo serious. It has nothing to do with that, man. It's located in the heart of the commercial center in Lagos. Ladies and gentlemen, at the gate of Banana Highland. I think somebody going to give Jesus all the praise. <laughs> Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So this great man of God is a man of humility. He's a man well known to the house, a friend of the house. God has given unto him the sharpener to sharpen my sickle. Pastor, you won't go to the until you give me a word. Because he told me when I was coming. And he took me to that Bible, to that area in Revelation 14. He said, go and study Revelation 14. And when I studied it overnight, and what I saw was, and I saw a man sitting on the clouds that carries a sharp sickle. And the Lord said, the word that will come today will sharpen your sickle for harvest. I have had so many people's harvest. My home must come, Pastor. Jeremy, welcome this great man of God. Pastor Femi, head on. If you are going to clap, then clap for my Father in heaven. Let us clap for the one who sits in heaven. The one who sits upon the circle of the earth. The one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords. The one who is the governor among the nations. Let us clap for the lord who is our strength and our song. The one who is our salvation, our glory and the lifter of our heads. Oh, we exalt you, oh God. Lord, we bless your holy name. We give you praise and we give you glory. There is no one like you. Indeed, you sit in the heavens and you look upon all of us and we're like grasshoppers in your sight. Yet you have made us a little lower than the angels. You have crowned us with glory and honor. You have made us to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus far above principality and power above every name that is named who are we O oh God that you are mindful of us we bless your name O oh God Let's sing that song like a prayer this morning. singing a song we're still singing a song this morning I'm talking about a prayer this song has been in our hearts and in our mouths in my household since yesterday Lord we bring this song as a supplication before you this morning we're gonna sing it with gentleness and quietness Moses was nothing until the power of God entered him. Elijah was just another man. He 
was just one of the inhabitants of Gilead until the power of God overtook him. And then he became as the Lord God lives before whom I stand. And his proclamation held reign for three years. Mary was just a virgin girl. Until the power of the Most High overshadowed her. Moses knew that he was born to be a deliverer. He killed a man in his own strength and became a fugitive in the backside of the desert. But when the power of God overshadowed him, when the power of the Most High took over his tongue, a stammerer became the deliverer of a nation. Became the instrument by which God brought judgment upon Egypt.
Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. Indeed, the entrance of your word brings light, brings understanding, brings direction, brings strength. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the sh sharp sickles that you will put in our hands today. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to thank Pastor Femi. My wife and I owe you a debt of gratitude. You and your house, you and your pastors who have become such a blessing to us and continue to be such a blessing to us. I don't know if I should say I'm grateful for the invitation today, but when a true man of God tells you to mount his pulpit and speak to his people, you have to tremble, you have to shake, you have to go and beg God. Why me? But I took confidence because I remembered a prayer that I prayed in 1996 when I saw the story of Balaam's donkey. I'm sure you are all very familiar with the story. The Wuruwuru prophet that... And the Bible tells us that God spoke through the donkey because of the madness of the prophet. And I said, Lord, if you can speak through a donkey, then you can speak through me. Jesus did not die for donkeys. Jesus died for me. So please, every time I'm called upon, speak through me. And God continues to help me. So this morning, there's a donkey on the pulpit. And the Lord will speak. And I pray that his word will come like never before to answer the questions of the hour. To deliver the miracle of the hour. To do the work that God has purposed to do as the man of God has said. To put sickles in the hands that are empty. And to sharpen the sickles of those whose hands have them that the harvest may be reaped because indeed the harvest is ripe. Because when the harvest is come, we must put the sickle in. Otherwise, the harvest will rot in the fields. That's what the Bible tells us. So in the time that we have left, I will just try to very quickly. I think this one was designed for people taller than me. I think they used Pastor Femi's height to measure the <laughs> of the lectern, but God will help me today. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, I, I bring a message that the Lord has laid on my heart for some time now. And that he has been speaking and reinforcing in different ways at different times through different means. And because I was asked for a title, I gave it the title Close Encounters. But it seems Pastor Femi has changed the title this morning by that word of prophecy. 
let me start by saying that the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 29, 29 that the secret things belong to the Lord. And those things that are revealed are for us and our children forever that we may do all the words of the law. That was Moses speaking to people who had seen the wonders of God. He reminded them at the beginning of the chapter that you saw how God brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand. How he has done all sorts of things for you. Yet, they are still here in doubt, in fear, in gainsaying, in double-mindedness, in all sorts of things. But let me remind you that the secret things belong to God. But those things that he has revealed are for us and our children forever that we may do. So God has secrets. God is a God of secrets. God is a God that dwells in the secret place. But in that secret place is also a place of revelation. God reveals secrets. And those things that he reveals are so that we can do. But it's not so that we can do what we please. It is so that we can do what he has required us to do. What he has purposed for us to do. The secrets of God are revealed so that we can fulfill the purpose of God in our generation. The secrets of God are not just for us to be puffed up with revelation. They're not just for us to be wise. They're not just for us to be deep. They're not just for us to be looked at with respect. They are so that the purpose of God can be fulfilled in our generation. God has secrets. But God also has the eternal purpose that he is unfolding in, from generation to generation. He has the eternal purpose that is unfolding from life to life. A lot of the time we think about the nation, we think about all sorts of things, but we forget that God is the God of one. God deals with every one of us as one man, one woman, one child. So there is a purpose for every single one of our lives because we are here by design. We are here on purpose. We were not formed in vain. There is something that each one of us must fulfill here. And in the fulfillment of purpose are all of those things that sometimes seem to take away from our focus. In the fulfillment of purpose is the house, is the job, the dollars, the car, the spouse, the children, the grandchildren, the positions, the authority, the power. But those things are tools. They are instruments. God's will will be done in every one of our lives. In the name of Jesus. But then, I'm going to make it personal today. In John 1.1. 1, 1, okay, I don't know if... Um, do, uh, uh, scriptures normally put up... Okay, so please put up John chapter 1. From 1 to 4 for me. John was talking about the power of revelation he said that which was from the beginning which we have heard we have seen it with our eyes we've looked upon it our hands have handled it concerning the word of life these are the things that we are talking to you about what we have seen what we have heard is what we are declaring unto you now god would have every one of us in the position of john we are what we are talking about is the secrets that we have seen the things that have been revealed to us in the place of close encounter those things speak louder 
than sermons. He says, I'm making this declaration to you so that your joy may be full, so that you may have the same fellowship that I have with Jesus, so that the same things that have happened to me can happen to you. And there is nothing like, how did you get, when you're wearing this lovely dress like the one my sister in front here is wearing, somebody will say, ah, where is your tailor? When somebody drives up in the latest Range Rover, like my sister, 2022 model at the back, the question will be, ah, ah, share the testimony. Pastor talked today about some people who will share their testimonies. There is nothing like the power of a testimony. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is full of close encounters. It's full of people that had life-changing, life-transforming experiences with God. And this morning, I've come to challenge us. I've come to invite us to come to the place of encounter. Because God is eager to do stuff. God is eager to do the things that will transform our lives forever. But there is a place. There is a place. We know that Adam had close encounters with God. Every day in the cool of the evening, God would come and have fellowship with Adam. God gave Adam instructions. But all of those things came from a certain place. The Bible says that God breathed the breath of life into Adam. And he became a living soul. God, have you seen mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation before? I'm sure you've all seen examples of people trying to revive others by blowing air into their lungs. The Bible says that God opened the mouth of Adam. The lifeless form, the body that he had created, which was just a body without life. God opened his mouth and God breathed the breath of life, Ruach HaKodesh. And Adam woke up. All of a sudden, his toes started to move. His arms started to move. His eyes opened. Life came. And he saw the Lord in his glory. Adam had close encounters with God. Adam's experience until the fall was a continuing experience of close encounter. And really, all that Jesus came to do was to bring us back to that place where, like Adam, we are walking in the fullness of God's power. We are walking in the fullness of God's revelation. Adam, God gave him an assignment. He said, name the animals. And the Bible says God was standing by just watching, waiting to see what would happen. Every animal that came, Adam gave a name. The Bible records that whatever name Adam gave to the animal, that's what its name was was because the words of Adam were backed by the wisdom and the power of God. God is seeking, eager, desperate to bring us to that place where our words again become like those words. You will decree a thing and it shall be established. Yes, in the place of encounter. All power has been given unto me. That's what Jesus said. That I have come and I have brought you back to the place where Adam was. Before, all I had were the keys of the kingdom. But after the crucifixion, when I went into hell and I defeated death and hell, and I took the keys of death and hell, I can declare to you that all power in heaven, the earth, beneath the earth, all power has been given to me. And that same power... It is in that power that I send you. So go and be second Adams again. Life-giving spirits. So that in those contexts and circumstances, in those situations, wherever it is, it may be an interview with an American company. It is what you say 
that comes to pass. Because your words are backed up by the power and the authority of heaven. Noah, the Bible tells us that he was a just and perfect man in his generation. He walked with God until he discovered Golda. It was Big Stout, Guinness, and Hennessy. That's what got in the way of uh, old man Noah. But the Bible says that Noah walked with God. And that's why God entrusted him with the responsibility of building the ark. Noah was the one that God used in his generation to preserve humanity. There's a work of preservation that God has given to somebody here. There is somebody that is called to be a Noah in a particular situation or circumstance. And God is waiting for you to do that thing that appears to be foolish to others. Because for years he was just building, 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 building. What are you doing, Noah? Uh, an ark I did build. Why are you building the ark? Ah, a flood is coming. The Bible says that they were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage. In the days of Noah, everybody was going on with life as usual. But there was this man that had received insights into the secrets of God from the place of close encounter. He was the one that knew, the only one that knew on the face of the earth that something was coming. But God had given him the secret that would preserve humanity. They say Noah here today. The Bible tells us that Enoch walked with God. Enoch was also a man that had close encounters with God. And his encounters were so close that God took him. So when we had our son, 23 going on 24 years ago, and we were waiting for the name, the name I kept hearing, in my head was Enoch, but I could not tell my wife that we should call the boy Enoch. So she said, what is the name? I said, I don't know. Because for the first child I was praying, the first and only time I've heard the audible voice of God was one Thursday before, two weeks before the child was born. And I heard it like as if Jesus was standing next to me and he spoke and he gave me the name. So I was waiting to hear the audible voice again. No audible voice. All I kept hearing in my spirit was Enoch, Enoch. Ah. So on the morning of the naming, our friends had been asking, what's the name of this child? In fact, one of them started calling him God's plan. It's just like my young nephew slash grandchild that was recently born and we were looking for names and in the confusion and the multitude of names, the mother said one day, which name? She said, ah, we are coming. But in this case, on the morning of the naming, my wife now said, how do you say I walk with God? That was the confirmation that we needed. Of course, she said, how do you say that in Yoruba? I said, Mobuluni. That's how we named him. Mobuluni will walk with God in his generation because that's his name and so shall he be. As his name is, so is he. Mobolori is here and he walks with God, isn't it? <laughs> Abraham. Abraham had close encounters with God as well. You know, if you start from Genesis, from Genesis 12 to the end of Gen Abraham's life, it was just a story of encounter. It was just one after the other. But you know, the one I like best is, is, is in Genesis 18 where God was now going to Sodom and he said, <laughs> Will I not tell my friend Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that he's a just man, he's an upright man, he fears God, and he will keep his household in the way of God. And God came and told him what he was about to do. And then Abraham started this intercession with God that resulted in the deliverance of Lot. Isn't it? Yes. Because the Lord said, if I find Ten, isn't it? I would deliver it. But they were not up to ten. It was Lot, Lot's wife, 
Lord's daughters. Abby? It was below the number. Numbers are important with God, but that's not today's uh, uh, subject. God is also looking for friends in this generation like Abraham to whom he can entrust secrets, to whom he can entrust plans. People who will come and say, let the judge of the whole earth not be angry, but will the judge of all flesh, the God of all flesh, will he not do justice? Will you destroy the wicked with the righteous? Are you not God? Are you not the God of justice? Are you not the one of righteousness? Are you not the God of holiness? People who will intercede with God and stay the hand of judgment. Because it is in the fulfillment of purpose that provision comes. God told the children of Israel to come out of Egypt. He said, I will deal with the Egyptians with a strong and mighty hand and I will bring you out. God delivered them from 440 years of slavery. And he told them to go and borrow from their neighbors. The same God that said, you will lend to many nations and you will not borrow. He told them to go and borrow. You know, many years ago when I was a lot more foolish than I am now, I was invited to one church where, you know, the, 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 the bishop is always talking about how, you know, they have a covenant not to borrow. So I went to the men's fellowship and I said, you know, it's good to operate under that covenant. But there are some times when God can give instructions to people to borrow. God told the children of Israel to go and borrow from their neighbors. God told the wife of the prophet to go and borrow vessels. Is that not so? Through the mouth of the prophet, go and borrow vessels from your neighbors. Borrow not a few. Why? Because there's a provision that's coming that your storehouse is not big enough to contain. Go and rent warehouses that you do not own. That's what it means today. Because I'm about to give you an $87 million contract. Uh -huh. Now, I said to them that God can give instructions that are contrary to what seems to be his word, but God's purpose is one. What God was doing when he told the Egyptians, the children of Israel to go and borrow, and he caused the Egyptians to be willing, he was giving them the salary for 400 years of oppression. When he sent Moses, he said, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel is my firstborn. Israel is the heir, is my heir, my firstborn. Let my people go, otherwise I will kill your own firstborn, isn't it? So, somebody enslaved the firstborn of the most high God and kept them without pay for 400 years. God was determined that that injustice must be corrected. So God said, go and borrow from your neighbors. Because he said, this is your creditors, you will not see them again. Now, how we do it these days is that we pray that our creditors should forget. No, it's only the wicked that borrows and does not pay. If we borrow, we must pay. Please, let's not pray for our creditors to die. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but let me get back on, 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 on course. Abraham had close encounters with God. And those close encounters were not accidents. They were for the fulfillment of the divine purpose. There was a covenant that was running in the line of Abraham. Those close encounters ensured that the covenant entered through Isaac. Go and get a wife from my, for my son, from my people. We saw the hand of God. Now in Isaac's time, he also had close encounters with God. Remember what happened in Genesis 26, when there was famine, and Isaac was about to do what his father did, he started going in the direction of Egypt. Because if you look at Egypt and you look at Israel, Israel, where he was, was in the hinterland. Egypt was near the water. There was water in Egypt. So if there is famine, it makes sense to go where there is water. 
So he was looking at it with the eyes of his own understanding. He was looking at it with natural eyes. But God said, I'm the controller of rain. And there are storehouses in heaven. There are treasuries of rain that are kept in heaven. I'm the one that knows where that rain is stored. So under this land where you stand, there is water. Stay here. I will bless you here. And the Bible says he stayed. And then after the issue with Abimelech and his wife was, and you know, sometimes when you marry a very beautiful woman, you have more problems in your life. You know, like, you know, my wife is very beautiful. But inside that bundle of beauty is also a blessing. Because after the confrontation with Abimelech over Isaac's wife, what happened was that God set a line. The same people that he was afraid of are the ones that God now made his megad. There's somebody here today. That thing that you were most afraid of is the thing that will actually be a source of security and safety for you. So after the Philistines became people who were now afraid of Isaac, Isaac got there in fear of the people. The people were now afraid of him. Then he started digging. And he found water. And the Bible says he got to one well and it was called Rehoboth. The Lord has made space for me the lord has enlarged me the lord has brought me to the place of water that does not run dry there is a river that flows from the city of god everything that the water touches lives isn't it and there is a river that flows from out of the throne of god in the city of god and from that river there are trees that grow on every side of it and it bears 12 kinds of fruit for the healing of the nations. In that place is healing. In that place is provision. In that place is the blessing of the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, that stands not in the way of the sinner, that sits not in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in it does he meditate day and night. For then... He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And that tree, what does it, its leaf does not fail. It bears fruit in and out of season. Everything that that person does prospers. There is a place of supernatural supply that has nothing to do with the exchange rate. That has nothing to do with Buhari's economics. That has nothing to do with austerity. The economy of God is the economy of the tree that is planted by the river of water. It is in the place of close encounter that we locate such trees. So the Bible is full of pictures, pictures, pictures. But those pictures are telling us the same story. Jacob, Jacob had close encounters. My two favorite ones are the one at Beersheba where he said, ah, this is a dreadful place. I did not know that I was lying down. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. This is the place where I have unhindered answers to my prayers because angels are ascending and descending here. And his second one was at Peniel, of my favorites. The place where he wrestled with God. Because the place of wrestling is the place of the sharpening of the sickle. It is in that place where we wrestle with God. How Jacob wrestled. And they say, what is your name? He said, Jacob. No, you are no longer Jacob the supplanter. Now you shall be called Israel. You are a prince with God because you have seen the face of God and you did not die. 
you have wrestled with God and you have prevailed. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. It's not in the power with which we clap our hands or stamp the floor when we are praying. It is in the attitude of our hearts that I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not release this matter until it is resolved. And then you come out of that place with a sharp sickle. Jacob approached the land of his fathers with the fear of his brother Esau. After he wrestled all night, God sorted Esau out. Even Jacob did not understand the extent to which Esau had, sought, had, had been sorted out because he still continued operating in fear without realizing the extent of what God has done for us. And I pray this morning that we will not forget the extent to which God has done deliverance for us in the name of Jesus. Moses, Moses was a man of encounter from the beginning to the end. In Exodus chapter 3, in the burning bush experience, he heard his name twice, Moses. Moses. We already know from Joseph a secret about God repeating himself. Once has the Lord spoken, twice have I heard it. Joseph told Pharaoh that God doubled the dream and repeated it because of what he is about to do. So when God repeats himself, he says, pause and pay attention. I am that I am. Now come and I will send you to Pharaoh. And the call this morning to that place of encounter is a twofold call, like it always is. Come, know me. Come, go for me. The first call of Moses was a call to know the Lord. The second call was a call to go for the Lord. Our first calling is a call to discipleship. Jesus called to himself his disciples. He sent them out, apostles. God is calling us twice. Know me, go for me. That story is repeated because of time. Elijah Isaiah, that same type of, I saw the Lord in the year that King Uzziah died. He was high and lifted up his train, filled the temple. And the angels, cherubim, seraphim, somebody came to our house, was it this week or last week? This week. I was telling us that cherubim and seraphim are not angels. And we said, okay, maybe you can explain the difference. But we don't think that the difference is important for salvation. He said there are many other archangels apart from... We know Michael. We know Gabriel. And we know that Lucifer is an ex-archangel, isn't it? He said, no, Lucifer was a something else that covered. I said... If those things were terribly important, the Bible would have. Because the things that are revealed are for us so that we may, so that we may. Ha. The secret things belong to the Lord. That's where I started from. The things that are revealed are for us and our children forever so that we may do. The secret things are revealed so that we may do. The secret things are revealed so that we may do. God is not a God of casual reflection. God is not a God that created the universe and sat back and is just enjoying his creation. God is a God of active purpose. God is a God of work. God is a God of work. What transformed Europe 
and led to the industrial revolution that led to the gospel going out from principally from the UK, Germany and a few other countries to the ends of the earth was work. They refer to the Protestant work ethic. The fact that some people got revelation from scripture and it moved them to transform everything that was around them. Time is not going to permit me today. This is actually 12 teachings that will take 12 hours to complete. So please let me summarize. I will end with Paul. In Acts chapter 9 we see and I'd like you to please put up Acts chapter 9. We see Paul And we know that he saw a great light and he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? But today, I want to focus on two things. Verse 5, and he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goats. And trembling and astonished, verse 6, second question, what do you want me to, what do you want me to, what do you want me to, these two questions, remember we talked about Moses, Moses, Isaiah, woe is me, I've seen the Lord. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips because my eyes have seen the Lord of glory. I've seen the Lord of hosts. And then they brought the tongues. Your lips are cleansed. You will live. And then from heaven, who will go for us? Who shall I send? And what was his response? Here I am. Send me. Who are you? What do you want me to do? These two questions. If you look at the life of Paul, you can see that in the Acts of the Apostles, from this event in chapter 9, 10, 11, and 12, they managed to talk about all the apostles. But from Acts 13, 10, 11, and 12, the three years where he was by himself receiving revelation from God. From Acts chapter 13. Look from Acts 13 to Acts 28. Now Paul and Paul, then Paul, so Paul, therefore Paul. Why? Because Paul had that close encounter that transformed his life forever. That encounter was based on two questions. Who are you, Lord? And as he started talking about it, he would tell you that I received, as I received, I received from the Lord what he revealed to me, which I now declare to you. Every time we share communion, we talk about something that the Lord by himself spoke to Paul. He said immediately, I stopped conferring with flesh and blood. It was Jesus himself that was speaking to me. The Holy Spirit was teaching me. That's why he said I was an apostle born out of time. Because I learned everything that all the other 11 who came before me, the surviving 11, they learned by being with Jesus while he walked the earth. But after Jesus had resurrected and gone to sit in glory, I now started having my own experience where the Lord was revealing things to me by the Holy Spirit. Paul was saying to us, if you look at his prayers in Ephesians, he was saying to us that I'm praying that you will be like me. So we pray that thing, but the context of it is that Paul had a close encounter with God that transformed his life forever. When the 
eyes of our understanding are enlightened. When we see the Lord for who he really is, when we see the finished work of Christ, when we get revelation in our hearts, there are some things that just fall away naturally. There are some things that we can know by experience. But there is a knowing that passes knowledge. There is a knowing that passes experience. There is a knowing that is beyond experiential knowledge. There is a knowing that comes by revelation. That comes from the place of close encounter. Because the time that we have, even if we live to be a hundred, is not enough for us to experience the fullness of the things that what God wants to do. So we need revelation for the balance. It is revelation that makes a man lose fear of those who are interviewing him. It is revelation that makes a man lose fear of those who are accusing him. It is revelation that makes a man lose fear of those who are holding that thing which he desires the most. It's revelation that makes a man lose fear of those things that he feared the most. Job said, that which I feared the most has come upon me. Every time when his children parted, he was making sacrifice, lest they sin, lest they have blasphemed. Let me just sacrifice on behalf of his children. But the sacrifice of Job that was motivated by his fear was not enough to stop his children from dying. But Job came to the place where he said, who is this? He was repeating what God had said to him in the place of course. Ah, God said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without understanding? After he heard God rehearse, when God started introducing himself and revealing himself to Job, Job said, ah, truly, I am the one who has darkened counsel by words without knowledge. All I heard about you before was by the hearing of the ear. But now, my eyes have seen you. I know that there is nothing that is too difficult for you. And in that place, in that place, God said, Job, come and make intercession for your friends. It is your prayer that I will answer. And in the place of doing something that was, he was not applying for a job he was just obeying an instruction the bible says that god gave him multiples of what he had before he restored to him everything sons and daughters and they even told us the names of his daughters before there were no named daughters now they told us their names jemima keziah Karen Hapok, Abi, And Job, even though Job was the wealthiest man on earth in his generation, after his eyes had seen, the God of the hearing of the air blessed Job, but the God of the seeing of the eyes now gave him even more than what he had before. Job said, I wish it was with me when the secret of the Lord was upon my tent, upon my tabernacle. When I could, the rock brought forth butter and I washed my feet in oil. Job understood the power of giving. Job understood the care of the widow. He understood concern for the fatherless. He understood meeting the needs of the needy, being the eyes of the blind, the ears to the deaf. Abi, uh, ears to the deaf, the mouth of the dumb, yes. But there was something that was missing from the equation, the close encounter. And when he got it, he was now by, by far the standout richest man in the 
whole earth. Now, some of us will be in the multi-billionaire category. Some of us will be in the billionaire category. Some of us will be in the multi-millionaire category. Some of us will be in the millionaire category. But irrespective of the category where we're in, my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. So we will have more than what we need. Not just enough for our needs, but enough for us to be a blessing to others in need. But beyond all of that, there is a place of the harvest. Remember that this whole thing is about the souls of men. The greatest harvest to God is the harvest of souls. We need money for souls. But we also need men and women who will go and do the work of the ministry. Will everybody preach on a pulpit? No. But in every department of life, in every mountain of ministry, in business, in education, in government, in politics, in the media, in the arts, wherever, we need people who will go with the secret of the Lord. TV, YouTube, media is full now. You see the videos. Wizkid, uh, Bonner Boy. Please, you have to help me. Um, David O. Yes, of course, David O. And so forth. But what do you see there? The open use of drugs. Nudity is glorified. Blah, blah, blah. But you know the answer to that thing? The person that will come with the sound of heaven. Many things happened in 1996. 1996 was the first time Pastor Adebue declared the 100-day fast in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. I was born again in Redeemed. I was ordained in Redeemed. I went through workers' training in Redeemed. We got married while we were in Redeemed. I had this vision. I had been asked to go and work with the choir. I cannot sing to save my life. I'm sure you heard me. But you know, that thing in the ears of God is a joyful noise. Uh -huh. So my own is equal with yours. But because I didn't know anything about music or blah, 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 I started to pray. And God started showing me things that later I read in books. Right? Mm -hmm. But one of the things I saw was this vision of, it was as if the whole world, the entire world, you just see a picture. There was a traffic jam in every street. The whole world was just one big traffic jam that day. Nobody could move. People were going into labor, people were falling ill, all sorts of things were happening in that traffic jam. And then all of a sudden, somebody turned on their radio, car radio, and this worship song just started to play. And after a while, every car, every radio, somehow was playing that same music. That same song now went through the entire traffic jam. And then what happened? The traffic started moving. The traffic eased. And the Lord said, I will release a sound that will come from Nigeria. And it will go to the ends of the earth. Now, the most visited YouTube uh, uh, sites are those of Nigerian artists, isn't it? The other day they said WizKid sold out the biggest arena in the UK in less than an hour. And according to the report, he earned 5.2 billion Naira from that. <laughs> so it's not just, hey, there's somebody that has to take that sound. There's somebody that God is releasing a sound to. 
and that sound will go to the ends of the earth. We've seen a small sample of it, isn't it? That song from Sinak. Remember? You know the song? We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I think I have 10 minutes, Pastor. 10 minutes. Throughout lockdown, that was the number one song. But guess what? It crossed over from the Christian charts and everybody was playing Waymaker. Why? When COVID locked everywhere. Remember what God was speaking about in 1996? You are here moving in this place I worship you I worship you you are here moving in our hearts we worship you we worship you you are here turning lives around we worship you we worship you you are the way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are the way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are. That is who he is. That is who he is. God is a promise keeper. God is a miracle worker. God is the one that makes a way where there is no way. <laughs> uh, we have this prophecy so that there will be a light. A sound coming from a sure place. A voice that no other voice can contradict. A power that no other can repel. That is the power that God wants to put to work in every one of our lives. And God is saying, come, 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 come. Come to the place of close encounter. Come to the place where I will transform you. In 2 Corinthians 3, from 7, 3 to 18, we're, we're, we're reminded of what happened to Moses when he went into the presence of the Lord and he came back and his eyes were shining. That was reflected light. Now he's saying that that was a glory that was fading away because it was a reflected light. He's saying that there is a light that he wants to come from the inside of us. That is not reflected light. That is the light that we radiate. So this is a glory that doesn't pass away. He says, come so that your light arise shine your light has come there is gross darkness everywhere but i want your light to shine i want people to see you so that they may glorify you in heaven because the light of the world is in you when you come to the place where that light has room to shine unimpeded undisturbed then the world will see your light and kings will come to the brightness of your rising
people in authority will say we will not make a decision until this brother has come this sister has come because you are the one that has the solution to the problems of your generation you are the one that has the solution to the problems of your industry you are the one that has the solution to the problems of your company you are the one that has the solution to the problems of your school your business your neighborhood wherever it is whatever you do come to the place where I will give you life John 7 37 and 38 so that rivers of living water will flow from your belly supernatural supply come to receive grace unmerited favor come boldly Let's put aside sin everything every disturbance every obstacle come with boldness come with audacity to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and then grace to help in time of need praise the name of the Lord come to the place of rest of revelation of fellowship come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon me you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart for my yoke is easy my burden is light that's another message but he's saying come to the place be yoked to me be the junior ox next to me the senior ox learn of me so as i plow straight furrows you are following me the yoke is on me the weight is on my neck i'm dragging it with my strength you are yoked to me i'm just carrying you along i'm bringing you into purpose i'm bringing you into destiny the yoke is not an instrument of punishment because that yoke has been broken the yoke of jesus is a yoke that brings us into the fullness of god's purpose for our lives come to the place of close encounter And finally come to the place of fruitfulness John 15 4 to 8 because I am the true vine I am the source of life I am that tree in these times you need me like never before God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear let the mountains quake let the earth rage let the seas rumble we will not be afraid we will not be moved why because there is a river there is a river that flows from the throne of God and it makes glad the city of God we are Zion there is a river our joy our gladness our confidence, our strength is because we are plugged into divine, divine supernatural supply. I am the vine. You are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. What that means is that everything you do outside me, zero, will not stand, will not count. But in me, through me by me because of me you can do all things father i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice thank you for the harvest that you have prepared for us You tell us in your word that the harvest is a time of work. Because that is when we must put in the sickle to gather the harvest, otherwise it rots in the fields.
Lord, we see fields white to harvest. Thank you because we are the laborers who will bring in that harvest. A harvest of blessing for us as individuals. A harvest for us as individuals. A harvest for us as the church of God. Oh, Father. Every hand that is empty. Lord, we receive a sickle in the name of Jesus. For every sickle, we receive a sharpening in the name of Jesus. We come to that place where we exchange our weakness with your strength, O oh God. We come to that place, O oh God, the place of intimacy with you, the place, your secret place. where we receive the strength to go and bring in your blessing. To go and bring in the supernatural supply, the abundance that you have released upon the earth. We declare every sickle sharp. Because we stay in the place of the whetstone of God. Because the psalmist says, blessed be the Lord my strength that teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Blessed be the Lord my strength that causes me to break a bow of iron. Blessed be God that causes us to run through a troop, that causes us to ride, jump through a wall. We receive supernatural ability in this time, oh God. We receive grace to pursue with strength. We receive the grace of David. And his mighty men that though faint, we are yet pursuing. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We acknowledge that we can do nothing outside you, O oh God. So we commit this morning to release ourselves like never before to pursue intimacy with you oh God to come to the place and stay in the place of close encounter we say like David this morning at the dedication of the temple come oh God with the ark of your strength come 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 afresh into our situations and circumstances, oh God. Come with the ark of your strength and make your permanent habitation with us in the name of Jesus.
you want to give your life to Jesus there is something that is about to take place right now being born again is your access to it I just want your heart to be open towards the master all hand is laid on the chest you give your life to him I want to talk to Jesus right now the Savior father save my soul I know myself, it doesn't even matter what people think of me. It doesn't matter your reputation and your records and the highs of men. What do you know of yourself in terms of relationship with God? I want you to receive Jesus right now into your heart and into your spirit. And give him a chance to live in you. Give him a chance to give you an encounter. He said, I'm at the door knocking. If any man should hear my voice and should open up, I will come in, suck and dine with him. He will encounter me. <laughs> uh, say, Father, thank you for saving my soul. I believe Jesus died. And I believe he rose from the dead. And all these I believe he did because of me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, glorious, awesome. Lardo Stariandara Kabaya, most powerful name I give my life today. Thank you. I receive my salvation. In Jesus, mighty name, have we prayed. Praise the Lord. Everybody take your seat one minute. We are, about to, we are about to take some two prayer points right now. But I just want to give you uh, a little understanding of the prayer points we are about to take. This is such a very spiritual meeting. I ultimately believe God for a torch, for a revelation, as he told me. Uh, one thing he told me when I was coming into service, he said the man of God preaching today will be preaching on fellowshipping with me and the benefits of fellowshipping with me. So I was wondering the spirit, which dimension is going to take. And I thank God that this is the dimension is very strong. Now, I must let you know this, ladies and gentlemen, two things I want to say. The man talked about an encounter with the Lord. Let me let you know this. Every great man this is one of the greatest secrets I want to reveal to you. Every great man that ever became anything in the hand of God, there was a particular point in time, a particular junction in their life where they encountered God. And from that day, their sequel was sharpened. They began to throw the sequel all over the world and they began to harvest worldwide from there. Harvest souls, harvest blessings into the kingdom, harvest material things, Harvest spirituals, harvest financial, harvest in all realms. They became significant because of an encounter. Now I want to let you know this is the pattern of God. One of the greatest secrets you ever learned today is this major pattern of God. Is a pattern of God. I'd been praying this. I was praying it a few times. I mean, sometimes in time past, I stopped. 
But God today reignited it with an understanding. Now I want to let you know this. This is the pattern of God. Until you come to that specific point where you have encountered him, you have not yet encountered him. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that naming a child may not be a ceremony. In some certain traditions, when a child is born, is born. They don't do naming. They just, the father just says his name is Chukudi, or his name is uh, uh, Obafemi, or his name is uh, this or that. And then they start bearing that name. But here comes, ladies and gentlemen, in some certain places, they do the naming ceremony, christening ceremony specific. Now, I want to let you know this. Encountering God is not like that. <laughs> Encountering God is a unique experience that is a synchronon. It's a compulsory condition. For any man whose sickle will be sharpened. They never became anything until that encounter came. Abraham, there was nothing recorded about his past. Until that encounter, Genesis chapter 12, come out of your father's house and I will. And another encounter that humanity is here to drink from, Genesis 22. Look at me, Abraham. In blessing I will bless you, and indeed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I swear by myself. It is irrevocable. From that day, there was not a single scripture that Abraham spoke with God or God spoke with Abraham again. Till Abraham died. Go and read your Bible. If you find one, come and, come and, come and tell me. I will give you money. If you find a single place where Abraham and God conversed again from Genesis 22 till Abraham died, not in the Bible. Because for him, the hold on confirmation is the end of all strife. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 12, 13, 14. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is, it is irrevocable at that time. An encounter with God is deep. That is what changes the life of every man. There was, and you know, what God told me is this. He said, men, he said, the GCC have come to that place. Individuals have come to that place where they will begin to have this encounter. Amen. There was this great man of God, William Branham, I told you. William Branham had been ministering, ministering, church pastor for years until a time came when he said, I want to encounter him. He told his wife, don't disturb me again. Don't look for me again until you find me. He went into a place, lock up himself in, in a place like a bushy place and he was praying in a room. He was praying and praying and praying days after, as in hours, eight hours praying. Yeah, bro. He said, if you would die, let him die there. I must encounter you. Ladies and gentlemen, then he saw a light hanging on the, on, the, on, on the roof. And the light was all over everywhere. And he was like, what is happening? And the man walked in, weighing about 200 pounds. His hair is dark. And the man was not wearing any shoe, barefooted. And the man said, I'm an angel sent from the presence of the Lord unto you. And then he told his servants, he said, from now, miracles will start in your ministry. And this and this, he said, behold, I will be with you in all your ministrations. From that day, Every, I was watching William Branham and he said, he said, from that day, everything started as you also can see. Ah, that word blessed me. There was a man, T.L. Losborn, who went to India to preach. For two years, he won no soul. He came back from, from, through the coast of California and he was apologizing to his wife. He said, I'm sorry for taking you on such a fruitless venture. He said, I will never go preaching with you again. Beside that, he lost one. I sent somebody there. I mean, they, until there was an encounter, he came back. No, nobody, no soul. He preached like this. He said, if anybody wants to give his life to Christ, not one single soul came out. Then T. L. Osborn went to the meeting of William Branham, and he saw how William Branham was healing, and he said, he said, this man dedicated himself and got an encounter, and he went into dedication, locked out himself, and he told his wife. Also, he said, if he dies, he dies. He said, please don't come. Nobody should come. He locked himself in the vestry of his church. And it was there first day, second day, third day. And every miracle he was looking at when William Branham was doing miracle, the Holy Ghost was saying to him, he said, you can do this as well. I mean, he would say to his wife, I can do this. Ah, I can also open blind eyes. I can also make the limb work. Then he went into that hiding for days and was fasting and he was praying. And Jesus walked into that place. And Jesus came to meet him. And Jesus said, yes, you can. That's all Jesus said to him. That's all the encounter T.L. Osborne needed. He came out of that experience. 
he called for healing ministry, healing meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, he said the blind will see the lame walk. A man that has never healed the smallest toe before. And then he called for a healing meeting and they brought the first person that came out was a blind woman. Tia Losborn lay hands on the blind eyes. The blind eyes opened. From that day, he went back to India where he was doing missionary work for years and he failed. He did not win a single soul. Then he called for a crusade. And for him to start healing, he firstly went down and he brought out a blind woman. He brought out disabled people, lay hands on them before everybody. And you know India now millions of people and their eyes opened and they were healed. And T.L. Osborne said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, the whole crowd came out. Where he had failed before, his sickle became sharpened. His sickle became sharpened. Until that encounter comes, Jesus was struggling. Hey, hey, Helen, my man of God. He was a man that pastored for about 13 years. He didn't do well pastoring. Until he went to lock up himself as well. He said, today I must encounter Christ. And A. Helen did not see Jesus physically. Neither did he hear any audible voice. But he was just hearing from his heart. And he told his wife, he said, his wife will bring food, he will bring it in front of his room. He, he will not take it. He was just fasting, praying, I must encounter you for days. How many days, I don't know. But when A. Helen came out, he wrote some things. He said, from now, you will begin to walk in miracles and all that. He took his heart and he took his cap. He said, look, past church, he came to church. He said, I've been pastoring you for long. I'm not a pastor, I'm an evangelist. He said, I resigned from pastoring now. And he took his heart and Bible and started. He started looking for the sick and he started praying for the sick. He started calling for healing meetings until he was a man that carried, maybe by human rating, the highest level of power in his generation. I had not seen a man of God that functioned in power like he had. It was too terrific. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He just started until he encountered God in that closet. Ladies and gentlemen, what is it that you want in your life? It's in that encounter. There was a man of God, I will tell you again, by the name of Alexandra Dawe. He was one of the pioneers of the healing movement. Alexandra Dawe, ladies and gentlemen, had a disease just like this happening. In his time, a bubonic, I mean, sorry, um, a, a plague during his time, not bubonic. And it was killing everybody all over town. Alexander Dawe had conducted 38 dead um, burial services because of that particular disease in his church alone. Can you imagine a pastor burying 38 of his members? And then the pianist that will pray when he's preaching at the burial service, the pianist now called the same disease. So when he got to him, he was tired. He was, just took his Bible, just flung it on the table. <laughs> Say, enough is enough. And suddenly he became sorry for what he did. And he went and he took his Bible. And he opened it. And he went back to go and take the Bible on the table. Lo and behold, when he flung the Bible there, the Bible opened by itself. And when he went to carry it, his eye just caught a Bible verse there. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power that he went about doing good, healing all those that were oppressed of the devil, for God is with him. So he says, so sickness is the devil. That was all the revelation he got. Ah, he said then to cast devil out is very easy. So when you see demon, he said, demon, out, he goes. He just carries his Bible. That same evening, he entered to where they are quarantined that woman, the pianist. He just entered. He defied the quarantine. He said, I command you, out. <laughs> and then he turned back and he left. Ladies and gentlemen, the body of that woman amended, and the woman came out of the sickness. That was it. Then I, I, Alexander said, if God can heal this, so they began to bring everybody with that, with that disease, that, 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 that pandemic, they be, I mean, uh, epidemics. They began to bring it to Alexander. Alexander, that we healed them all. He went around Australia and healed massively. That was the beginning of the healing ministry. He encountered God through his scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be a point of encounter to give you a sequel. This man went around the world and he stopped the storm on the high sea. You know, in those days, there were no jets. He stopped the storm about 18 times traveling. He was a man that was very terrific in healing. He was a man, I mean, what's his name? John G. Lake heard about him. And John G. Lake said his sisters are sick and sent letters to Alexander Dawe. Alexander Dawe is all, okay. By this time, by 5 p.m. on Tuesday, I will be praying for your sister. Just telegram. 
Alexander that way laid hands on the letter. Eh? And immediately they had cancer. And immediately the cancer disappeared. It weird, they were in another town. That's the level of power on Alexander that way. When John G. Lake saw it, he said, no, I must go and meet that man. I must go and learn. Then he went and he encountered God himself there. Ladies and gentlemen, we know what John G. Lake did all over the world. Friends, there is so, you may be an ordinary man till you leave this world, until a sickle is sharpened in your hand. You will, whether it is in business, you see, not all of us are called to be evangelists. Not all of us are called to be pastors. Am I right? But what everybody has a calling in, Abraham was not a preacher. Abraham was a trader. He was a businessman. Isaac was a cattle I was a business. Am I talking to somebody here? Joseph was an administrator. It was a, do you get what I'm talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, whatever field God has called you to, to function, when your sequel is sharpened, resource starts. There must be a time of encounter. There must be a time. And let me say this as we begin to pray. The Lord said, I should let you know, when the preacher was preaching, he said the encounter will come in different faces. For some, it is God appearing to you direct. Oh, yes, it's an encounter. I remember I was redundant for six years until Jesus appeared to me. I saw the nail print on his hands. Ladies and gentlemen, from that day, that was when my life started changing. That's why things changed in my life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And you see, encounters are on ending. It's on ending harvest. <laughs> I'm set for another encounter. That's what God is talking to me about. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? See, for some, God will appear direct. Some, you will hear his voice direct, just like Ab Abraham had his voice. And God said unto Abraham, leave. Isaac had his voice. Isaac, Genesis 26. So John, do you know until that encounter came, Isaac was nobody. But from that day, Isaac was a, was a father's boy until that day. From that day, we started talking about the weight of Isaac. I don't know if you get what I'm talking about. The success of Isaac in what God has called him to do. Before, it was just what his father left behind for him. Ladies and gentlemen, the man Joseph encountered God. It was in his dreams. So for some, it would be in dreams. He had the dream. You know the story. That dream flung him into Egypt. That was the reason why he was sold. That dream did this. That dream did that. That dream calmed him down. That dream is no, no, no. When they said there was opportunity for it, he said, no, I will not commit this. Thing. He said, I have my visions. <laughs> I have this. I have that. That dream, until that dream came to pass. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that dream was, the Bible said, until God's word, which he has told him came to pass. Do you understand? His feet was hot in high on until God's word, do you understand, which he has told him came to pass against the wickedness of his cruel brothers. Amplified Bible, Psalm 105, verses 18 and 19. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? You see, that dream was the point of revolution in his life. For some people here, you will experience God in your dream. For some, ladies and gentlemen, it is a man of God that will come. Oh, yeah, he had always been fellowshipping with God. Thank God for that. He had a balanced Christian life. Thank God for that. But a man of God came and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. From that day, the encounter started. First Samuel chapter 16, David the apostle of God. The apostle of the Old Testament. From that day, chapter 17, it, it destroyed Goliath. From that moment, ladies and gentlemen, it became nationally known. Exploit started at the national level. He was at the backside of the desert with few sheep. And he had been a good, I mean, worshiper. God said, I found a man after my own. Because he was always praising God. God was looking for, he received God said, for after these ones, do God seek. John 4. Those who worship him in spirit and truth. So he had always been a deep worshiper. God was seeking for him. He was seeking for God. He told them, Jerem. But you see, he was only on a little platform. But from that day, something started. He encountered, it was through a man by the name Samuel. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be through a prophet, you may be through a pastor. Some of you will have your own encounters. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, encounters on different platforms. For Paul the Apostle, he saw God direct. He saw Jesus. Acts chapter number 9. Who are you, Lord? He knew he was Lord. He was there asking him, who are you? <laughs> so, you understand? He had a direct encounter. And, you know, the angel appeared to John G. Lake and told him something. And that is what we're about to do right now. The angel just took the Bible. He appeared to John G. Lake and the Bible flew into his hands. And he opened to Acts chapter number 2. He said, seek after this experience always. For therein lies the solution to all human problems. Ah! <laughs> he said, seek. You know Acts chapter 2 experience? When they were in the upper room. 
And the Holy Ghost came, patted and sat, and they started speaking to him. From that day, John G. Lake started speaking to him. They asked John G. Lake, what is the secret of, of your ministry? In Spoken in America, you had, Spoken was declared the healthiest city all over the United States. How was this possible? Ladies and gentlemen, John G. Lake told them. They said it was because of the presence of John G. Lake there. They, in, you entered into, into, into South Africa. In five years, you, you gave birth to 500 churches. No, in the, no technology, not in those days. It was a man that they would bring the sick to him and he would pray over a place like a post like this and say, let them be touching it, they will be healed. Two weeks after, the blind are still coming, the lame are still coming, touching and they are getting healed. After John G. Lake had gone. So said, where did you get this terrific level of power? John G. Lake said again and again, he said it is in speaking in tongues. The angel appeared, he said, seek after this experience for therein lies the solution to all human problems. When John G. Lake, he didn't believe in medical science. When John G. Lake wanted to do healing in those days, he would say, Come, all ye, all ye uh, uh, Abali doctors, this one, that one, and doc, uh, um, Abali's witch doctors, the, uh, uh, he will call all of them and will put medical doctors in that category. <laughs> because they never believe in them. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, come and see. And they, will, they said, somebody that the, there was no high at all, John G. Lake will lay hands before medical doctors. Eh? And real high will budge out. A man came to John G. Lake. He said, I don't have faith to be healed. I don't even believe in you. I don't believe, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in you, but I want to be healed. Uh, John G. Lake said, don't worry. My faith is sufficient for the two of us. And they went to the man and held the hands of the man. They were talking. And by the time you finish, it, you start to collect the crutches of the man, the first one, the second one. And then the man was going, and the man had forgotten that he came with crutches. And he was walking normally. So John G. Lake called him. He said, called his and he said, hey, what about this? He said, to hell with it. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> You know what, John G. Lake said, I know that by mere touching it, life flows from me to him. He says, how, how did you get this level of power? Somebody said, many healed. He said, only John G. Lake was able to teach others on how to heal. And he raised many healers all over the world. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, see, he said, how were you able to? He said, just that encounter, speaking in tongues, that the angel told him. He said, even if you don't know how to do anything, just speak in tongues. He will walk in power. <laughs> Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He says, seek after this experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what your own unique experience is. They were frightened. They were in the upper room. They couldn't do miracles. They couldn't, in fact, there was no money to eat. They went fishing after Jesus died. Until that experience came, there must be an encounter that launches you into your destiny. From that day, that same Peter that they said you are one of them that was denying, that same Peter stood before them. 3,000 gave their life. 5,000 gave their life. Again and again, his sickle became sharpened. Ladies and gentlemen, that encounter of Acts chapter 2 is here today for us to seek. We are going to pray in the Holy Spirit. If you cannot pray in the Holy Ghost, open your mouth and begin to pray it. It will start right now. I feel the power of God all over me right now. The anointing is going to be so strong that everybody after now, you'll be encountering it in different ways. You open your Bible like this, you will encounter it. Just like Alexander that way. Whatever means, you begin to encounter everybody, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. In your dreams, you will encounter him. Angels will appear to some as he appeared to Moses. And he appeared to William Branham. In whichever way there are diversities of operations, your own will come to you. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray. This is such a prophetic meeting. Don't be likable, pray, conscious of time. This is such a prophetic. Please be on strings, please. This is such a prophetic meeting. This is such a prophetic meeting. You must encounter God to sharpen your skills, to sharpen even your, your, your sickle. Your brother, your you must encounter, yeah, bro, dear, that is what brings you out. That is what turns around your situation. Daniel was nobody until Daniel chapter number 1, verses 16, 17 came. And God gave them, Yama Shakata, Lekebo Zubra, knowledge and skills in all wisdom and learning. Yekebo Shakata, and they were found ten times better. Lekebo Digarokta, Neke Kredia, their encounter of elevation started from there. They were just like any other slave. Lekebo, until there was an encounter with Jesus. 
Jehovah. Somebody pray, 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 pray. God said, as you are praying in tongues today, He said, you are batting supernatural encounters. You will encounter it in your dreams. You will encounter it by, by the prophetic. You will encounter it in the angelic. You will encounter it. Yeah, bro, dear, even when you open the Bible, even like Alexander Dowie, you will encounter it in different ways. God will appear unto you. Somebody pray. Yabaragado Sato Yagabo Shakata. Mande zila go shere mamba prali goros te sotre dia. Membra ni gerak te zubra li gerak te sendele kosha. Membra magabade zela glorik to zubra li gerak te. Membra mamamande pare gerak zoge brobaya. Lord, an encounter with you, an encounter that changes my ministry, that changes my life. Somebody pray, pray, pray. Ma kre gere bok sato yagaba. Ma prale gerak te zadra kabo. Prali gerak te zokoto yagaba. Mama, ma, dear husband, sought after it. Hey, Helen, sought after it. All these men sought after it. They got it. Like a bro, he said, I'm the Lord. I change it not. If any man will seek after it, you will get it. I am the Lord. I change it not. Somebody pray, 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 pray. I am tired of an ordinary life. I am tired of an ordinary life. I want a sequel that can harvest around the world. I want to be a global reference. I want to be a man used of God, even in the kingdom of God to bring many souls. Even Mato Zakato Yagaba, Dakaba Yakabo Shakata. There must be a place of encounter. Ah, there must be a place of a close encounter. Something the Prodia must have. Every man that ever became somebody in the hand of God, they experience it. Jacob experienced it through an angel. Legabo Shakata. I said, You are fought with God. God, a man, you are prevailed. Yeah, bro, and Bethel, he saw the ladder reaching heaven. The experience said, there must be that place of that encounter. Somebody pray, 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 pray. Lord, I want my own. I want my own. Every man in scripture that ever became anything, go through the entire Bible. You will always trace a particular encounter to them. There was an encounter that battered a new move in your life. Somebody pray today. Mado zabra kado bok zata yagaba, lenge krede bok zedo bo prali ada seketradia, mambra negero to zubra li gerokta, lege bo shana mande, rage bok zere bo prali gerokto zumbra ningerista, mandala bo zubra di gerokta, mambra di gerokte zekre gebo, babra ni gerokte zadra haksu, Roma makota shokata yagaba, Father yele bok zede daya, let the rivers of Encounters flow in this place. Mano Sakata. Let the rivers, my God of life, the rivers of divine encounter flow in this place. Give everyone, my God, an experience of you. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto them once again in Shiloh, even via his word. Lord, today let the word, my God, appear. And the word of the Lord appeared unto Abraham. Father, appear via your word. Appear unto everyone, oh God, via angelic visitations. In the name of Jesus. Appear through their dreams, my God, Lord. Joseph encountered you in his dream and he set him apart from his brethren. That experience set him apart. The Bible says, Let the blessings that the blessings of my of my God, the blessings, Yembradikarokta Magaba Yagaba, Lagabon Joseph, and more than the blessings of my progenitors. Let them all rest on the head of him. That is separate from his brethren. That encounter separated him. He separated him that you are different, you are the leader. Father, let me encounter you. Let me encounter you. Now somebody pray and understand the Lord. Let me encounter you. Let me. Oh, Labo Shakata, a life transforming encounter. A life transforming encounter. A life transforming encounter. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. From today, mark this world. All of you will be having different encounters right now. Lebro, I saw two angels. They were taller than everybody here. As I'm looking at them, they look like 12 feet tall angels. And they were moving on the crowd. The Lord said, I should let you know, encounters are distributed. Many of you, you will have unique encounters. Ah, some labored as Abraham entertained angels. He, Abraham had this encounter severally. Act Genesis 12, he had one. Come out of your father's house. Genesis 15, the word of the Lord appeared unto him. He had another one. 
Genesis 14 Ah, liu gabara gato zebra diga rukta legredia deke boxa babra mekishadek appeared unto him and gave him a blessing again. He had another. Genesis 17, he had another from God again. Genesis 18, under the tree of Mamre, ladies and gentlemen, three men appeared unto him. Another encounter. And at every junction, those encounters were lifting him to new levels. Every change of level was always preceded by an encounter. I prophesy, because it's the season of an end in harvest, you will begin to have concatenations of encounters. It will not be a one-time encounter. It will be a lifetime general encounter. When Paul was to be called into the gospel, Acts chapter number 9, he had an encounter. Ladies and gentlemen, when he started and he was to start preaching, and he was preaching to the Jews and they would not receive his testimony, another encounter started. Jesus appeared to him. He said, go henceforth to the Gentiles. He said, for you will not receive your testimony in this place. When he was to be called even to start preaching, he had an encounter, Acts 13, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at every junction in their lives, there was always an encounter that lifted them. There was always an encounter that lifted them. I prophesy today in your life, you will begin to have multiples of divine encounters. <laughs> and these encounters will always change your levels forever. The Lord said there's somebody here within 10 days from now. He said, I will bring you to your real boat. Amen. The meaning of that is just don't hear that word. Go and study about real boat. It's a place of peace, of rest. A place where you begin to generate results stresslessly. A place where, ladies and gentlemen, Nekobu Jakarta, effortless results will begin to come to your bosom. A place where life will work for you without stress. A place where you will say that God has taken away my struggles. A place of enlargement. A place of enlargement. God said within 10 days from now, you're going to experience. Everything God tells me comes to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, don't please, we don't play with this word. For that person who has that word, go and study about real boat. I am going to do a study on it myself today too. Because I believe that word for my life. In Jesus' name. Lift up holy hands and just give him praise for what you have just encountered today. Sweet Holy Spirit of God. Come see the world. The works thy hand has made. I see. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL, Instagram at DGCCINTL, on YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.